So moving on to the tent for the X1. So first things first, in order to get to the zipper, we have to raise the awning. So same clips as we use for the boxes. Got some gas struts, it just lifts it up. Once the awning comes up to its full height, we've got these two little stays that come down and just lock it all in so it doesn't come back down. So same on the other side. Once that's out of the way, we go around, undo the straps. So we've got these little bag straps just to take the tension out of the bag so it doesn't flap around. Undo all them, walk our way around. As you do it, I find it's easier as you take them off so it doesn't get in the way of the zip. Just pull these up sort of halfway so when you undo the zip, they don't get caught on the hooks. Yep. So once the straps are out of the way, you've got your zip here, starts in the middle. So you can grab this cord. Don't go, the cord's there to make it a little bit easier. Don't go yanking on it. Same as everything else, if it doesn't go, just run your thumb in front of it or just check to make sure something hasn't been caught in the zip. You can break it. Um, and zips aren't one of those things that's just considered wear and tear. It's not a warranty thing. So just be real careful with your zips. So you just pull them up, run that around the whole length of the bag, and then we'll take the bag off. Once that's all off, basically all we gotta do is just grab the canvas, pull it all down. So it's sitting on the ground. Uh, at this point, if you've got a ground sheet or something like that, it's a good time to, say, to, to throw your ground sheet down before you pull that down. But once we've got our canvas off the top, I find it's easiest to jump on the drawbar and then just help lift the tent up. The tent should more or less hold itself, hold its own weight and hold itself open. And then you can go inside and we'll throw the poles in. So from up top, we lift the tent. Makes it easy. Um, probably a good tip would be to leave one of the doors open so you can get air or at least one of the windows so you can get air in when you're trying to open the tent, it doesn't suck in. So inside, um, before you jump in, um, when you get your camper, these poles will be in the back. Um, I like to store them up here alongside the mattress. Reason being is you can open the tent and then use the pole before you stand in there to push out the floor of your tent. And then you've got a little C-clip pole there it just clips into the side. You extend them. So to extend them, they just twist and lock. Set them to the length. There's a little round disc on the floor. You sit the pole in the middle of that disc and do that for both sides. Once your tent's kind of secure, you could run around, throw your pegs in, um, peg down your tent. Inside here, once we're inside, um, the first few trips, you're going to have to basically coach the canvas to take its shape. So as it goes over the top of the actual um, the trailer itself, um, you're going to have to sort of coach it into position. One way I like to do it, is just use your foot in this bottom corner to help push it down. And essentially all it's doing is just trying to get out some of these wrinkles and help it stretch into the right positions. Um, the canvas we use is pre-seasoned, so you don't have to season it. But all these, where all these stitching is, um, you might notice some daylight coming through there. You can get a wax stick or something like that to run over those if you see any water come in. But if you do throw a bit of water on there, let it dry, a bit more water, let it dry. Um, it'll help get those, uh, let the stitching swell. It should seal up anything so you won't have any water leaks. Um, in here, we've got a couple little press studs. This is just to help locate everything. There's two press studs on your camper. Just clip those in. Just keeps it nice and neat and tidy. And you can do the same here to get into your, your main storage compartment in there. Um, setting up the bed. Um, if you're not as tall as I am, not many people are, but um, We've got a zip either side, so from outside, I might show you how that works. From outside here, we've got a zip. So you can undo this zip, and we've got a little travel strap. So this normally 
clips on here to hold the bed. So we'll take that off. We do that on both sides. Once those clips are undone, that's when we can lift the bed up. So again, if you're not, if you don't have the height, you can always push this down and stand on the wheel. So you can throw a leg up on there and stand on the wheel. I've got the advantage of height. So grab the mattress. I find it's easiest to use your, your forearms. Grab the mattress frame. We've got a handle there. I prefer not to use that. I'll just use the extrusion or the, the little um, grab, grab marks on the, um, on the mattress itself. Grab that and then just lift up and just sort of use your body weight, your upper body weight to pull it up. You'll see it's all on gas struts. So we've got gas struts in here. So it's easily, like once it's up, it's holding its own weight. And this is where I use the handle just to bring it over and catch it before it falls down. So once we've got the mattress over, or the, um, the bed frame over, just here we've got a little latch. Pull this little latch and that helps lower the staircase. Um, in the back of the camper, we've got a small uh, rectangle of black marine carpet that's designed to protect the floor so that goes underneath your staircase. So throw that underneath your staircase and it'll stop the steel feet on your staircase from pushing through the floor. Um, so that's just there purely for protection. We've got our um, little brace. Once the, the staircase is down, we've got our little brace. There's a little red button here that you push to release that. And then you've got a series of five holes here, depending on the level of the ground and whether you've got any holes or undulations or whatever else. You can clip one of these into basically the most appropriate hole with the intention being this frame or this setup this staircase is to support the bed. So if you imagine you're sitting on the bed, this actually becomes a structure to be able to support the center of the bed. So you wanna have a bit of pressure there to help support the bed. There's no point in this thing floating in the air and you sit here and all that pressure is getting transferred to nothing. So use this staircase as a support leg. Um, and then last but not least, you've got your little flip out handrail, flips over, clicks in, and that's it. So. We've got a brand new trailer here, so the mattress is all wrapped up. Um, but basically that mattress just flips over, sits on top here, um, and you're ready to go to bed. We'll go around and I'll show you how the tent clips to the awning. Um, and then I'll go through some of the, um, the kids' room and that sort of stuff. So um, the front of the tent here integrates with the awning so that if it rains, we don't have obviously water and, and rain and stuff like that running down into your kitchen area. So we've got this little, I don't know what you call it, little cover that goes over the top. And we've got these three straps. So these are the same style of straps as what holds the bed frame down. This little magnetic strap, they work really well. Once they're clipped on, they don't come off. And then we've got this little tensioning strap here. So you can tension it up. Um, it's like everything else, the important thing is, is once you've got it all pegged down, it's even. So you don't want to pull the whole tent to one side that it all that this sits loose and then the, it, it all looks a bit funny. You want to make sure that you peg it all out, stand back, see how it all looks. If you see that the apex of the tent sort of leaning to one side and this wall here is a bit loose, then loosen these straps off. Basically give it a bit more um, length on that side and pull the whole tent back until this wall is nice and tight. So if you do that, the whole tent will actually sit nice, the tropical roof will sit nice, this will sit nice, and all the water will sheet off. You won't have any dramas. I've seen it where people will tension too much this way, and then you'll end up with this pooling effect, and you'll end up with water inside your tent or inside the, the awning area. So 99 times out of 100, it's just an adjustment. So just stand back, have a look. The key indicator is this wall should be nice and taut once it's all tight, once it's all um, pegged down. So we clip these in, there's three clips go onto the awning. One, two, three. The nice thing with these is once you've got them in the right spot, you shouldn't really need to mess with them. You don't have to tension them and loosen them every time. They'll just stay in the same spot. Um, and then up top, we've got one here for the tropical roof, which just clips onto the, onto the um, top of the canvas. So like I say, first couple of camps, just spend a bit of time mucking around, getting all the tensions right. 
um, and then from there it's pretty straightforward. Every time you set it up and pack it up, it all should just land in the same spot. Only other thing I need to show you through is likewise with the, the canvas. You want to make sure that all your canvas, um, you want to train it all basically so it all sits in a way where water is going to sheet off. If it was sitting like you saw there, water is going to pull up and you're going to have issues. Um, so work your way around the tent. Like I say, first few trips, just being a little bit sort of fussy around where everything's sitting and making sure everything's nice and smooth. So to imagine if there was water, it's all going to sheet off and run. It's got somewhere to run. It's not going to pull. Okay, so um, the only real couple of things up here I need to show you is um, with the light switch and the Labasto tent heating if you have it. Um, so both of them are down here. It's a touch switch is the important thing to, to realise. Um, if you do push it like a button, you'll break it. So it is just a touch switch. So if you just touch it, it turns on and off. If you touch and hold, it'll dim. And if you turn it off, it'll go back to wherever you set it for your dimming. If you touch and hold it again, it'll come back up. Alongside that, if you've got the Obasto, there's a little three position switch. Um, basically, center position is off, same as the inverter. And you've got two speeds, two fan speeds, so a high and a low. So depending on how cold it is, if you put it on a high, the Obasto will work a bit harder um, and then blow more hot air up into the tent to heat the tent up a little bit. So the Obasto is gonna probably take the edge off in terms of temperature, um, but works really, really well. So if you wanna use that, turn the Obasto on on the dashboard. Um, once it's on and running, if you put it on infinite, it'll just run for good. And then use this fan to turn it on and off so you've got a different level of air flowing through. That's about it in here. So if you want to use the kids tent, it's really, really straightforward. Uh, we've got this outside door and the inside fly screen. They just roll up and you can leave them rolled up inside. Um, we've got four zips, so one across the top, one each down each side and one along the bottom. And then same deal as the rest of the tent. You want to spend a bit of time making sure these sit over the top of the zips and use the Velcros to seal the corners. Once the kids tent's on, it doesn't have to come off. On the X1, it can stay on there. So it all packs up, everything all packs up inside the bag. Um, the key with the kids tent is basically got this one adjustment strap that comes across the top. It connects onto the pole, so the, the pole on the kids tent. Same as everything else, don't make, make sure it's not too loose, not too tight. So spend a bit of time getting it all sitting in the right spot. Everything's nice and taut so the water sheets off. Throw all your pegs down um, and then just tension everything so it sits nice. As I said, once it's all done, you've done it the first time, you shouldn't really need to mess with it again. So those first couple of trips, just take a bit of time. If you're not sure, get a couple of photos and send it through to us. Happy to help. Okay, so I'll show you how it all packs down now. And then after we've gone through all of that, I'll show you how the awning sets up and packs up. So inside, it's virtually, it's the reverse of what we just did when we set it all up. So um, throw the mattress over, get it out of the way. Um, with, the, uh, with the staircase set up, we've got these, this lever here. We push these two levers in and that releases the handrail. Push the handrail behind. Um, if that becomes a bit loose, you can tighten it up so that it holds itself snug at the back of the staircase. And then we've got our support system. So. Uh, like we did when we set it all up, just remove this little leg, it just comes down and with a bit of a push it locks into position. So now we can fold the actual staircase up, pull on this little lever and that helps locate it all in, in, um, in situ. So, so if you've got bedding and dunas and things like that, push your bedding and your dunas um, towards, the, towards the, uh, the kitchen or the awning so that it clears the mattress once it's folded over. Um, if you've got kids dunas and things like that, that can also go up there. The X1 is pretty forgiving and you can put quite a bit of gear up in here or on top of this bed frame once we fold it over. But most important thing is making sure once we fold this over, it all sits nice and, and level. It doesn't sit up and um, up out of the way and that'll prevent you from closing the tent. So once that's all done, just simply push up on that. There's no latches or anything to hold it, to disconnect it. Throw that over and have it sit flush. So um, once that's down, we can undo our press studs off the trailer. Um, 
probably worth checking if you've zipped this up, just pull on it to make sure that the press studs have been removed. It's going to be hard to close the tent with them connected. Zip up all your doors, zip up all your windows. Probably just crack one of your windows. So I like to just crack one of the windows a little bit just to allow a bit of air to get in and out when you fold up and pack up. Um, and then your straps. So if you're not as tall as me, you go, to, go around the side like I showed you before and you can undo those zips and get your straps. But they're just to stop the bed frame from bouncing as you travel off-road. So you put those in, pull them down tight, the bed frame's nice and secure. That's about it inside. Um, just pull down the, the poles, we throw them in here. So once the poles are out, we can come outside and then basically kick yourself once you've pulled the pegs out, kick yourself a hole. And this pole that was here that you clipped your two vertical poles into, just grab hold of that and push it towards slightly up and slightly forward towards the kitchen. As you can see, it basically folds itself up. So I'll go around and I'll unclip the awning and I'll show you how to tidy up some of the canvas on that side. So I'll unclip these three. And you'll see you got your webs of canvas. You basically just want to chop them in. It's not critical, but it just makes it all sit nice. You can see there everything's sitting inside the bag. Clean up the other side. Um, and that's sort of it, just making sure everything's tucked in. Straps and things like that. And then just grab the canvas over here and throw it over. So once you've got all your canvas sitting on top and you've tucked all your straps in, you grab your bag. All you've got to remember is the Patriot logo goes towards the back of the camper. So grab the driver's side and you'll get good at this. You basically just want to throw it up and then you can work your way around tuck it all over the top and then do your zip up. Once you've done your zip up, then you can start doing up all your straps. Okay, last but not least, uh, the awning. So we've already set the awning up. I've showed you how to do that with the two legs. Um, the nice thing with this is you can set up the awning independent to the tent. You can set up the tent independent to the awning. So you can do one or the other or both or whichever mixture you like. So you can come into camp over lunchtime, throw the awning out, got some shade. And then if you like, you can throw the tent up separately um, or in any order you like. So for the awning, obviously undo the bag first. It's up to you. I kind of don't mind just rolling it up to get it out of the way. Also makes it a bit easier to show you what's going on. Okay, so there's three Velcro straps Undo those. So this one, like your ones, a brand new awning. It's never been opened. So you've got a couple of toggles, and I'll show you how, how they all work when you pack it all up. But undo the toggles. One, two, three, four. And then on this first pole, you want to undo this first awning um, upright. It's a metal, it's a steel pole. And then just, it basically fans out. So you just walk it around. And if you come around on this side, you'll see over here. So this pole integrates with the rear spare tire carrier. So basically slot this base into the bottom of the spare tire carrier. And then we undo our spare wheel. And this top hook comes across and catches it, pulls it in nice and tight. So that's all that needs to do to hold that in place. That's not gonna fall out, that'll stay right there. So we work our way backwards. So every single pole's integrated into the awning. It's all held up there captive. This is the only pole where we have to slide it out. So there's a little 
button there, we push that out until it clips in, and then we lower the leg. Now it's important to remember when you're setting up the awning that just be mindful of your weather conditions if there's wind and stuff like that around. These awnings have a knuckle system in here. It's basically designed to break. So if the wind comes and grabs it, it will flip it over and it'll break all these knuckles. So it's just, it's not hard to fix. It's just something you don't want to deal with while you're camping. So if it's windy and you're not sure, have some pegs out and some ropes out ready to clip on so it catches it or get your partner or something like that to stand nearby and just hang on to the awning to make sure it doesn't blow away. At least until you can get some pegs in. So keep working your way backwards around towards the fridge slide. So you can see we've got one, two, three poles already up and now we've just got to fold out the last little square back section. So you'll see on here we've got a little tab sitting on a hook here. We just undo that, flip it around, the last pole, same as the ins inside poles, they just quarter turn and lock in. And then this will be in the back of your camper, but basically we've got one spreader pole. So I find it's easiest if you grab with your right hand, it's up to you, but with your right hand and aim with your left hand and come in here locate the right hand one in there and just hold it with with your right right hand and then spread the pole out a bit of tension and that's it so at this point you'll utilize these little tabs and I could probably recommend a couple of carabiners or something onto your guy ropes to save you having to tie it on you can carabiner it straight on peg them down um, all the awning should be pegged down. So even if it's if it's not windy, the wind could come up, take your awning for a good fly away. Um, so make sure you peg your awning down just to save you any expensive damage. So that's it, that's the awning. Um, we'll go through now. Once it's all pegged out, we can go through all the, um, the pack up and everything else is just the reverse order, but there's a few little tricks towards the end. So before we pack it up, I just thought I'd show you. Um, so in your kit, you'll have this little lead here. So this just simply plugs in the back here um, this is for your um, your light on your awning. So every awning's got a little light integrated to it. So it just simply plugs in when you find the keyway. Um, and yeah, you've got this little blue light. If the 12 volts turned on on your TVMS or on your on your control panel, but this little blue light, you can turn it on and off. You can change it from um, you can dim it down. And then there's a little arrow circle arrow button goes from orange to white so yeah um, that's something optional if you want to throw that in over night time just gives you a nice little bit of area lighting a couple other things with the awning while it's up um, if you go to bed of a night time very good idea to drop a couple of legs so if it does rain the water sheets off um, the, the the awning basically especially this panel here above the kitchen um, with all the poles on every side can catch water if you don't lower one side and it catches water, it's going to have a lot of weight on there and these are only aluminium poles, they'll break. So to pack up, it's the reverse order of what we did. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to fold all these poles up, remove the spreader bar, push the square back, back in. Um, once they're all folded up and I'm around the other side, um, I'll go through basically the key points that you need to know to be able to fold the, um, the awning up uh, really well. So there's a few little tricks and I'll show you through them now. Alrighty. So, same deal, reverse order, push the spare wheel in. As you pull that out, just be careful it doesn't scratch the back of your camper. Um, we fold that up and get it out of the way. Now the key point here, as you fold this up, you want to gather up each of the webs. And on this pole, with this hand, you want to pull it around so our knuckle on that side is following us around. So we're just giving this thing a bit of a jerk every time you come around. Now this is the important bit. So we've got three that sit up in this area and one that clips up onto this toggle. So the first one, first web sits on top, doesn't actually sit on the toggle. The second one comes through, sits on the toggle. And the third one, this is that extendable pole, make sure it's pushed all the way back, sits on the toggle. So that's those three, right? Fourth one comes up and there's another little strap hidden up in the back. 
stick all that on the toggle. So you can see there, one, two, three, four webs. They're all held up, everything's all supported. So if we come around the back here, this, this piece here, if it sits back here like this, we're not gonna be able to close the bag. So we wanna come over here and give this a bit of a shove so it sits forward almost on a 45 degree angle. And that'll allow us to close, close the bag nice and, nice and um, easily. Probably the last little point is to spend just a bit of time. So one, two, three webs of canvas. We wanna fold them so it fits in the, in the footprint of this last web of canvas. If we just rolled it up the way it is now, we'll end up with this big mass of canvas here and won't be able to zip the bag up. So you want to grab these three webs, one, two, three webs of canvas, and almost fold them in half. You don't have to get too fussy. But what that does is spread that canvas out across this whole area here so it's easier to fold the bag, uh, zip the bag up. So it all sits inside that last web, and then just roll it up. Use the Velcro. To hold it all in position. And that's it. So from here, just zip the bag up. While the um, canvas weathers and softens up a bit, it might be a little tough, but should, um, should be pretty, pretty, pretty easy if you follow those steps. So to fold the last little step to fold the um, so this pole would live in the back. I'll leave it there for now. Last little step is to fold the awning down before you travel. So we just undo those little stays, flip them out of the way. So if you're having trouble undoing this, just put a bit of upwards force here, and it should come off easy. And then it just drops down. So you see here the little latch ready to go. So that's it guys, that's the, um, that's the X1, full setup, full pack down, um, basically covers everything there is to know. There's a few extra little steps or if there's anything you're not sure of, feel free to go back, have a bit of a walk through, go, to, go over what you haven't seen. Um, if you've got any other questions, jot them down, hit us up when you come in and grab your trailer, more than happy to sort of talk through anything else that you want to know. But otherwise, that's basically everything there is to know about the X1. Thanks very much.